welcome back to my YouTube channel. Now, this video, I'm gonna continue from where we left off. We are on uh, SPM Form Five, Chapter Five, Part Five: Nuclear Energy. Right? Um, not long ago, I would I talk about um, the detector and uh, the detector. It's work behind the concept of ionization in my previous part um, and then we'll talk about the half-life how do you calculate half-life the time required for it to reduce to half under radioactive decay now here in this uh, video we will talk about the energy that is going to bond the proton and neutron what is the energy the bonding of the proton and neutron okay now to start off with um, you need to know a new unit it's not a new unit it's actually a specific unit used by a uh, nuclear physicist because this is the best unit they used to measure the mass of atomic particle the atomic particle is so small I mean an arbitrary particle of any shape as previously we have a neutron a few neutron and then in periodic table we recognize the particle by the amount of proton they have okay so in this case um, I'm going to draw an arbitrary atom. This is actually a nucleus. So, what binds them together? What binds them actually in the first place? I mean, what binds the neutron and neutron, proton and neutron together? Knowing the fact that the positive and positive are supposed to repel. You cannot bring a positive together. <coughs> so, what binds them? What binds them so that it form into a nucleus? Okay, and that is the nuclear energy. So, scientists have been working around the globe to harness this energy. So, if you were to harness this energy, and you get nuclear energy, and this nuclear energy is capable. To help generate electricity, I mean, you he heat up the uh, water, you get steam, and then the steam turns turbine, and then you get electricity. So, we are going to calculate, and we're going to understand where this energy comes from, and the amount of it. Right now, to start off with, you get to know a new unit, and this unit is called the atomic to measure actually huh? atomic mass unit. Is actually the uh, measure the mass. Okay, in terms of using gram or kg, they use atomic mass unit, or in short, they call it a dot m dot u. Okay, so what is amu? Okay, now one amu or one u atomic mass unit is actually equivalent. To the mass of carbon twelve, the mass of carbon twelve atom by twelve. So if you look at this equation, you can think of what does it mean by that? Okay, you may go through the uh, product table, or you go, uh, you find out that the uh, the mass of a carbon. atom is actually um, 1.99 times 10 power of negative 26 kg but since we are going to measure the atom I mean one particle so that's no way that you can measure it in your kg scale 
So what happens? Scientists invented a unit or called atomic mass unit, and they use carbon twelve at the basis. So if you have carbon twelve mass of carbon twelve atom, you divide it by twelve, meaning there are twelve proton. You divide by twelve, so you get a mass of a proton. Therefore, if you divide it by 12, so therefore 1 AMU will therefore be 1.99 times 10 minus 26. You divide it by 12 kg. Okay? So therefore, 1 AMU is equal to 1.66. I accidentally changed the color. It's 1.66 times 10 to the power of negative 27 kg. Okay, so this value is so small, and that's the reason to why so small. That's the reason to why we need to use AMU to really represent the mass of one particle. Okay, so it's a common unit used in nuclear physics because it's a more convenient way to represent mass of particle, which are very small. Okay, then next thing, if you come along, you get to learn a new term. This term is called mass defect. Okay. Now, mass defect. In order to understand it, I'm going to represent it by using a diagram or an equation. Okay. Now, when you have, we have learned earlier that if, whenever you have radioactive decay, the parent compound will decay into a daughter nuclei. Okay. So let's say I have in this case two to six. Um, 88 of radon this would be a considered radioactive material because what happened this eventually will decay due to the fact that the proton number is more than I've mentioned it earlier in my video let me show you It's considered too big, right? If you have followed my video in the past, when the uh, nucleus is too big, then it will tend to decay, and that's the radioisotope, okay? When the nucleus is too big, meaning the proton number more than 83, therefore it is considered too big. So when it's too big, then it will tend to decay and the process of a radioactive decay I mean one element I'm not have one element decay into another decay into uh, random 2 to 2 and then uh, 86 of Rn, Randon, this is Radon, Ra Radon to Randon, then uh, in order to create it, so this is 2 to 6, 86, in order to get 26, so you have to plus 4, and then you plus, has plus 2, and therefore you know, because of 2, you know this is actually helium, and uh, this decay will take place, and then you get energy, also energy will be released, will be released. Then what happened? This process, well, we can see enormous energy is being released, sound energy from firecrackers. So what happened? This process, the, this is the process. This process is called transmutation. Now, 
transmutation occur when you have a parent compound decay into a daughter nuclei. The process from parent to daughter is called the transmutation. And this transmutation, when it occur, you see that the mass is actually not equal. Okay, you can't see it here because it's, it tells you only 88 proton. So let's calculate the total amount of proton over the left. It will compare it with total mass of proton over the right. What happened, you find that it would be a difference. It would have a difference. Let me show you. From over here, the left, if you want to convert it into AMU, okay, it turns out to be 226.02536 AMU. For Rendon and Helium, you sum them in another color that would be 222.01753, and the mass for an Helium would be 4.00. 260. Okay, you will perform this and then you will get a 226.02013. Okay, now if you were to compare these two numbers, if you compare them, this with this, the third number, I mean, you can see the front is the same right after the fourth after the third decimal you can see there's a missing number and this is what it means by the mass defect and this amount of mass is actually converted into the energy because there's no way to go it's not in random it's not in helium the only way is with the energy so therefore this amount of mass you need to find out what's the amount of mass. If you use this number, you subtract this number, therefore, this number, subtract number, therefore, you get zero point, a very small amount, and that's the reason to why you need to, to use AMU, or otherwise, 5 to 3 AMU. Or else there's no way to actually measure it in a kg. Okay? So you subtract them, and this amount of mass is actually being converted into energy. This mass defect is a, in accordance to the Einstein, I mean, the Einstein principle of mass, where you have E, the famous E equals to mc squared. Okay, then, uh, You may pause this video for a while and then uh, go through the objective question from your exercise book. And then um, only then you may want to resume this video. Principle of mass, energy, conversion, oh, I mean conservation. Conservation meaning it's conserved, meaning that it's not lost to anywhere. It's preserved. I mean, Einstein, this is the equation. <coughs> then you may ask what is C, huh? C is actually the speed of light. I mean, 
is if it were to be in uh, SI unit, then it would be uh, times 10 power 8 meter per second. You may actually get this figure from uh, your calculator. Then mass is actually in kg, and energy is in joule. So, um, in order to use this equation, be sure you learn how to convert this unit from AMU to kg. If you want to find out from this mass defect equation, be sure you learn how to convert from AMU, I mean from kg to AMU or AMU to kg and vice versa. So this is actually what you need to learn and what you need to go through. So that... Uh, you are actually prepared for your final, I mean for your SPM during November, end of the year. Now this is basically all about it, this video about nuclear energy. If it was first time watching my video, kindly subscribe to my channel. And I'll appreciate the thumbs up button for the video I've made. I hope it helps you. And each and every video should you should actually gone through ten to fifteen objective questions related to the video you have watched. You may get all those questions from uh, various publisher available. That's all from me. Stay tuned to my next video.